Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode, and we're going to continue some organic chemistry in today's lecture. And this time we're going to be taking a look at base catalyzed epoxide opening. So we recently released a video on the channel about acid catalyzed epoxide opening. It turns out base catalyzed is a bit more simplistic than the acid catalyzed. So if you're confused with that, check out the link in the description below for the acid catalyzed uh, epoxide opening video lecture and make sure that you learn that before moving on to the base catalyzed epoxide opening which we are going to talk about right now. So before I get started just a reminder to please hit the like button because that helps with the YouTube algorithm in terms of promoting our content so we can continue to bring high quality content to you. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be up to date as we release content throughout your semester. So head on over to chemcomplete.com because we have guides available there, including a new guide on what you need to know in order to pass organic chemistry, and it helps support the channel. All right, so epoxide rings as we discussed last time, are three-membered rings with an oxygen between two carbons. So it looks just like this. And epoxides are extremely reactive because they have a 60-degree angle strain in that three-membered ring. So they tend to be uh, certainly more reactive than the non-epoxide, the regular ethers are. Now, something that epoxide rings can undergo that regular ethers cannot is base catalyzed reactions. So all ethers can react with acid. However, epoxides specifically are able to react with base. Now, unlike the acid catalyzed reactions, for the epoxide base catalyzed reactions, it is going to be an exclusive SN2 type of result. So if you remember back from the acid catalyzed, we had a mixture depending on the substitution patterns around the epoxide where primary and secondary would give rise to an SN2 type behavior. And if there was a tertiary site, it would give rise to an SN1 type of behavior. So in the base catalyzed, it doesn't matter whether there's tertiary present or not it's always going to be exclusive SN2 type behavior, which is to say that we will always be headed towards the less substituted area. So to give a very quick example here, if I had an epoxide that looks like this, keep it nice and simple, okay? Here is the, actually, let's make this a CH3, right? So here's a tertiary. And here's a primary. So if this was acid catalyzed, the tertiary site would be attacked. But in base catalyzed, it's going to be the primary. So the SN2 type of result is going to be what we would see. And so whatever the base is, we would expect it to come in and attack this site, opening the epoxide in this manner. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here, just so that we are familiar with what we're talking about. So to start, we'll go ahead and create a ring system that has an epoxide coming off of it. So let's do something like this. We've got CH2 coming off of here, and then we'll have an epoxide that's between the ring and the CH2. So again, creating a tertiary site to the left and then a primary site to the right. So we'll go ahead and note that for ourselves, tertiary and primary. Okay, now with base catalyzed, we're obviously going to be using a base instead of an acid. So let's start with uh, one of the most common bases that we know, which is hydroxide. So we'll start with a hydroxide similar to something from potassium or sodium hydroxide. Okay, and then this would be an aqueous solution. So we've also got water present. So what's going to happen? The base will act as a nucleophile. It will come in and it will attack the less hindered position, which is going to break open the epoxide ring. So notice in the base catalyzed reaction that we do not have any type of protonation of the oxygen before the ring opens. It's simply an attack that's going to occur and the ring will open. So moving down to the intermediate, once the base has attacked and attached itself, 
I'm going to be left with an intermediate where I have a charged oxygen species. And then I'll also have the addition of the base to the less hindered position. So in this case, I've got an alcohol group that has formed off to the side here. Because this is base catalyzed and a catalyst should return at the end of the reaction, the water now plays an effect and we have H2O. With the H2O, this oxygen will grab a hydrogen and you'll return the OH minus back into solution. So this is the true part of the catalyst in the title of the reaction because it's returning at the end here. And so finally, if we were to draw the product, we would end up with the ring and then attached to that ring would be an alcohol as well as another alcohol with the alkyl alcohol, the CH2OH. So that is an example of a base catalyzed epoxide opening. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. And this time, instead of using hydroxide, we'll use ethoxide. So it'll be an alkoxide, which is another sort of derivative from an alcohol or an ether. So this time we'll keep it simple and use just a small chained epoxide. So this is gonna be secondary over here. And then we will have a primary site over here. So we know that we're going to attack the primary site. And the reagent that we'll use this time, as I said, will be ethoxide. So here's the ethyl part of ethoxide. Okay, and this would be negatively charged. So kind of similar to a hydroxide, but we've got a R group instead of an H group there. And then similar to how there was water with hydroxide, we would also have ethanol as the solvent here. It's a good idea to have a similar version if this is going to be base catalyzed because we can return the base portion at the end of this. So the ethoxide acts as a nucleophile, comes in, attacks the less hindered portion of the epoxide, opening it up. We come down to our intermediate. Now I'm drawing this a bit more straight chained at this point. Okay, so here is the charged oxygen species that results from the epoxide opening. And then we have CH2 and ethoxide is what added to that. So we'll go ahead and write that right here. Okay, and then the ethanol molecule, which can be used as a solvent, is going to return the base. So we'll grab the hydrogen off of the ethanol. These electrons go back to this oxygen, which regenerates the ethoxide base. And then we can come up to our final result, which will be an alcohol and an ether. So it'll be CH3, CH with the alcohol, CH2, and then the ethoxide. All right, so I want to show one more example and then we're gonna wrap up here. And this next example isn't so much a catalyst as it is a base opening. It's not going to return anything. And you may be familiar with this. This is going to be the Grignard reaction. So for the Grignard reaction, you're going to have a magnesium halide reagent. And when you use that, it's going to create a strong alkyl base. So let's go ahead by setting up our epoxide first. We'll use the similar epoxide that we just did. Okay, so that portion over there is secondary. And we'll also have a primary site here, which we know is going to be the site of attack. So for the Grignard, you have some sort of an R group. We'll keep it simple and use CH3, magnesium bromide. This is a partial negative, and this is a partial positive. The charge separation is so great in these Grignard reactants that usually you can almost consider this CH3 with a formal minus and magnesium with a formal plus, okay? And the Br would be coupled with that. So this is kind of how we can separate those. 
But regardless of how you're putting this, this is step one, the Grignard reagent, and it needs to be followed up with an acidic wash. So again, the Grignard reagent is a base, and it will be a base opening, but this is a bit different compared to what we just saw in the previous two examples. So the alkyl group, in this case the methyl group, will act as the base because it's negatively charged. It's going to attack the less hindered position, open the epoxide, and then the intermediate is going to be the addition of that methyl group and the opening of the epoxide to give the charged oxygen. So, here's the structure. You can see that CH3 has been added to the less hindered position. Now, we're going to use step two, and that would be the H3O+. So, once the Grignard has successfully added, we end up grabbing an acidic proton from H3O+. That will give electrons to the H2O. To neutralize it and then we end up with the final product which would be CH3 CHOH CH2 and now we've added another carbon portionality CH3 so that would be a Grignard reaction for an epoxide opening so this concludes the different methods or ways we can look at bases opening epoxide rings so again, leave a like if you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe for all of your content needs. And if you leave any comments, I am happy to interact with the community. Head on over to Chem Complete to show us some love and support over there. And as always, just watching the video and learning with us is support enough. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you for the next one.